Whenever you first launch Adobe Photoshop CC, in addition to noticing the toolbar that you have available to you on the left hand side, you also notice on the right hand side there's a number of panels. And these panels are part of workspaces that Adobe has offered to us. And one of the things that I really like about this version of Photoshop is that we have multiple workspaces to choose from by default, or we can create our own, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But if I click this drop down menu where it says Essentials, this is the basic setup for our Essentials workspace. So if we want to just do some basic work in Photoshop, say on a header graphic or something like that, the Essentials workspace may work fine. We have access to our colors, we have adjustments and styles available here, layers, channels, and paths, the basics, right? Now, if I click on that, however, and you'll notice that there are additional options available to us. And really these options are based on themes. Like for instance, if we wanted to do work uh, primarily with 3D, which Photoshop now supports a lot of 3D options, we can choose that workspace and it'll change what's available to us that would make the most sense for us if we were working with a 3D object in Photoshop. The same is true with painting. You'll notice that now the primary feature here are our brush presets. Uh, we have uh, info, navigator, and properties, all of which are very helpful. And another thing that I want to point out here, you'll notice that this secondary panel is changing as well. This is history. We have our brush controls, our cloning sources, and tool presets. If I click on that button, it maximizes it. Right now, we haven't done any work, so there is no history. If I click on the brush settings, you'll notice that it expands out and gives us a lot of detailed options with our brushes. And we're going to look at these here in another video. But just additional controls that really give us additional flexibility at our fingertips but um, they're nice and neatly hidden away for us. And of course these change as we change our workspaces. So if we choose photography and you wanna do a lot of work just on images, you'll notice that once again, the primary panels have changed as have these panels as well. Okay, so now we have access to actions. The properties was moved from over here to here because it's really a secondary piece of information. Same with our character tools. So if we want to work with a specific font, say you wanted to take a photograph that you took and add some kind of a quote to it to create a meme for Facebook or something like this, this would be a perfect workspace for that by default because all the tools that you need to create that are right here at your fingertips. Same with typography. Let's say that you wanted to create something that was type heavy or you had a lot of words that you wanted to add by selecting that workspace you can actually have access to all the primary tools that you need. Uh, you can see now character and paragraph are dominant here in this area of the workspace. History is usually a part of this panel always because it's kind of like undo, multiple levels of undo. And we'll take a look at that in future videos. Or you can create your, like let's say that there's specific tools that you use on a regular basis, and that's been true for me, you can go in and organize one according to what you prefer. So if I click on new workspace, I can name it Tony's default, click save, and then you'll notice that it's still the same as what was there. Okay, but now I can reorganize and rearrange this like for instance let's say that I don't really need two versions of I don't really want the paragraph styles and the character styles I can come up here to window and you'll notice how there are check boxes next to paragraph styles I can click on that and it'll remove that but let's say that I do want to include actions so I, or let's say adjustments. So I can click on adjustments and it's already here. Okay. We see it that it's already here. I can actually drag it over here and now it's available to me on a regular basis. So did you see what I did? I just 
dragged it from this panel over to this one and the horizontal blue line which told me that it's ready to dock inserted it there so i can literally come down through this list these are all of the different uh panels that we have that we can work with and we can position them anywhere we want and as we do that it actually saves it automatically to our workspace so that if i uh, come up here and say switch back to painting and then come back again and choose my default workspace notice that it changes it back to what i originally selected as I was customizing it. So as you begin to use Photoshop on a more regular basis and get used to certain tools that are your go-to tools on a regular basis, you can construct a workspace that you're most comfortable with without having to you know, constantly switch between the different workspaces. I found in my work with Photoshop that there are some advantages to the default workspaces, especially if I'm doing a lot of painting and then I wanna add type. Rather than creating a, a brand new workspace that has some of the painting tools and some of the type tools, I'll just switch back and forth. You can switch to any other uh, workspace at any given time during your creative process, and it doesn't affect the work that you're doing on your image. It only affects the tools that are available to you. Okay, So workspaces are a very powerful option when working with Photoshop CC.